so we continue our program. Uh, today in the morning we will deal with two major faculties of consciousness, vision and hearing. <clears throat> Uh, we had to jam them into one day, and even word we added to it, because we introduced the whole day to education, which was yesterday. Uh, the idea was of this seminar to dedicate to each day one, the examination of one faculty of consciousness, so to say how vision works, how mind works, and so on. But we couldn't manage it. It's just too many days. So we had to change our plan. So today we put three major faculties of consciousness, hearing, seeing, hearing, and word, into one day. Which is too much, but still we will just try to do whatever we can. So on vision I invite uh, Natalia Pavlovska to talk. She has prepared the whole presentation. And we discussed these topics for quite some time, for a long time. And it would be interesting for us to engage and to give your suggestions. Please. Vladimir often uh, tells me that I am a person of vision. And when I study what is vision, what is seen, I understand that I am very far away from what it can be. And uh, I would like to um, share with you uh, my experience in this field. I went to some seminars on paintings, on to how to see the colors, and I was aware of wearing how our, how does it work, this scene. So let's start. This quotation was mentioned a few days ago, maybe yesterday, maybe the day before. And I would like to repeat it now, the mother's quotation. The universe is an obj ob objective, objective, objectivation of the Supreme, as if he had ob objectivized himself outwardly in order to see himself to experience himself, to know himself, and so that there might be an existent and a consciousness capable of recognizing him as their origin and of uniting consciously with him to manifest him in the becoming. There is no other reason for the universe. And you see, it's not only seeing himself, but experience himself also, and to know himself. And that is uh, the main goal of this objectivation. So this is additional ananda we spoken previously. It's additional ananda to experience the unity in many, one in many, and many in one, and to use all these functions of consciousness to see, to experience, to know. According to integral paradigm of knowledge, seeing, drishti, chakshush, was perceived as a faculty of consciousness which puts a seer into direct contact with the image of things, which can be translated in terms of a direct evidence of the truth. Drishti in the Vedas is, is the ultimate faculty of consciousness as revelation of the truth. It is of a direct and self-evident nature, direct, direct contact with the self. Uh, you see, and just put this picture. It's our I, our child. And maybe what it, that is why, if seeing is a direct contact with the self, that is why our eyes is the door to our souls. We can touch ourselves through eyes. Also, it can connect us. D. 
the prajnana in seeing. Uh, the prajnana, or our apprehensive cognition, holds an image of things in front in order to enter with it into the relation of synthetic or analytic cognition. It wants to know it as such, objectively, as it were. This is the major feature of the faculty of seeing. Seeing distinguishes the elements of the object, object of sense, regardless of how it feels for us or what it may mean for us. It wants to know it as such, whatever it may be. And this is a very important point of seeing, of the apprehension, cognition. We need to apprehend first, and then we need to try to understand what we are seeing. How does we usually see things? We see things uh, we see things like like a gl we put a gla glance. We just not see deeply, because uh, we want to be uh, confident in in our in environment. I see you. You are sitting here. Many people on chairs. I am just oriented in the space, and I am comfortable with this. But I am not seeing you like you are like like self inside of you, because I am in a hurry, and uh, I, need, I need this fast picture, but it's not seen as itself. And we need to distinguish this thing, uh, this thing, uh, this apprehension cognition, because apprehension cognition uh, is, I'm not, uh, I need not to name all of you that you are people, this is a chairs, or something like this. I need to see firstly and deep, to be deep in the context of, in this moment. And I will, further I will be described how it can be. There are two great examples, two genius, uh, and I would like to, spoke, to speak about them. So the first Leonardo da Vinci and the second is uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, they were genius because they use uh, functions of consciousness. They uh, somehow they uh, knew how to do it. Leonardo da Vinci uh, drew a lot. Before he, uh, he studied from the nature, and first he observed, he did a lot of sketches. He would like to know the shapes, the forms, and he liked to be in the contact, to concentrate with the objects of seeing for, for some time. And then he can ask a question to himself. You see in the center of this picture how, how detailed his pictures are. It's not a, it's a profound work and it was a, of long ago. In the center you see the picture of heart. You see he was very interested in his anatomy and uh, you see, I will show you just here. It's a heart calf here. And he has, uh, he had a lot of pictures of this calf. He, he didn't know what is it, how, how, how does it work. And through seeing, through concentration, then he understand how does the hot calf works works in us. And in that time, they make uh, they made artificial calf and they made operation on 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 heart. In that time, and only in our scientists uh, were capable to do this calf only in the twentieth uh, century. Uh, because he, yeah, and you know, I just want to give an example of what is seen and uh, what uh, this faculty of consciousness uh, can do for us, for our development, for our progress. Another example is Nikola Tesla. Uh, he was born in Serbia and uh, he, in, ch in his childhood he was a very ordinary person, boy. And he was an, uh, he saw, and when he was a little boy, he saw an accident with his brother. His brother died, and he saw it. 
and in that time he had a lot of nightmares. And it was, he couldn't sleep, and he tried to change the image in his mind. And he did a lot of work to change this image, and finally he could do it. And he, he could, mm, he, have, he had a gate to travel in inner reality. He said, uh, I met a lot of people in different spaces, and in the universe, I found a source of knowledge. It's uh, like a big library. We can take any knowledge from this library. And especially for him, he, has an, he had an ability to do it consciously, to, uh, to uh, not like an accident, I was in the library on something like, like, like this, but he, can, he could do it consciously and he used it in his work. He was a genius also. And one story about him, uh, how, he, how, he, how he worked with electricity. In order to understand how electricity is working, he went to uh, America, to the state where, is, uh, where the, uh, there are a lot of funders every day. And for four, year, for four days, he was absorbing this funder. He just was looking, apprehending them. And after four days, he said, now I understand about electricity, everything. I was in a contact with the self, with this pandas and he did a lot of work on electricity and if you know he um, invent the method how can we get electricity out of nature without fuel or without something like this but I don't know what happened with his works uh, maybe humanity is not ready humanity is not ready to be free and to be in other conditions. And he was just too early for humanity. And uh, another very interesting example about Tesla that he didn't do sketches. He had all the sketches in his mind, in every detail, about machines, about instruments, and whatever. So he, uh, his seeing faculty, as in Leonardo da Vinci, was very well developed. And everybody of us can do it because we have it in our consciousness like a potentiality. So I would like to go to the practice and I tried to find some method how can we achieve this uh, development of this faculty of consciousness and drawing is a great exercise for our eyes, the most effective one. It's like a accurate visual judgments and then we put them in, down onto the paper. Drawing is not the thing, uh, a hand and our fingers is the secondary here. The main, uh, the main source of drawing is our, how can we see things. So I just well, would like to put mother's pictures. He drew a lot also. And to show that drawing is very important to develop our consciousness too. It's like a small example, you see? It's uh, moving. You see it? Can you stop it? Could you stop it? When we stop the picture, we use another state of our consciousness, and our state of our brain. You, it's not moving. You're uh, maybe more right, uh, your right hemis hemisphere or brain is working, just you are relaxing. And we, when we try to catch the uh, picture, it's moving. When we, we are relaxed, it stops. Just a small example of how can we see. I think it's not, I have this uh, test individual judgments uh, just to, um, I think it's far away from you, just I will skip it, but we have some test. How can we 
determine what we are in our scene now. Um, it's a simple example. What is in apprehensive cognition here? This is a form, it says a photography of a cap. I did it very quickly. And this is a picture. What is this? Is it a drawing or it's just a symbol? Everyone will recognize that this is a cap. But you see, when I drew it, this cap, I was interested only in the name. I want to, to make the symbol for you that this is a cap. But you see, here is a curve. Here is a curve. It's not straight line at all. But I know that the bottom is flat. So I put it into my picture. And that's how uh, our thinking is faster than our seeing. And that is why it's very important to distinguish apprehensive cognition from comprehensive one. And if we manage it, we have a great instrument in us to progress. Um, what is the symbolism? Symbolism comes from us from the childhood. I uh, love this picture. These pigs are very beautiful there, you see. <laughs> um, when child is progressing, when development develop, uh, develops, um, he tried to simplify the reality because there are a lot of things around himself. And he tried to simplify it to, to in order to express them. And every one of us that came from this stage of symbolism, but at the age of eight or nine years old, there is a possibility to develop our seeing skills. If we, if we are talented from the nature, we don't need to some push from uh, environment or, so, or somebody will teach us. We are talented and we know somehow how to do it. But many of us uh, don't know uh, how to be, how to develop our seeing skills. And we need some method, how can we do it? So it's very important in the age of eight or nine years old to give the children the instruments how to develop their scene. And I, I will talk about this too. Last year I was talking about the left and right hemisphere of brain and how they work together. And uh, if be very concrete, uh, our right brain hemisphere is connected us with apprehensive cognition. And our left brain hemisphere is more comprehensive one. Uh, they, work, uh, they work together and simultaneously. And we cannot live without left or right brain. But somebody, some people have some accidents with their brain and have experience of this right and brain capacity. And when I was interested in this sphere, I just discovered this method of Betty Edwards. She's an art teacher. In, um, in America, uh, she uh, tried to find some method how to develop our seeing skills. And I found out that it is a very efficient one. So according to the basic compon component skills of drawing by Eddie and Betty Edwards, uh, Drawing a perceived object, so-called realistic drawing, is a visual pe perceptual skill made up of five component skills. They are seeing and drawing edges, lines. You see, when I saw you, I just saw symbolic, some, some symbolic picture. But I pay attention to all of this. I see lines, I see spaces, I see relationships between forms. I see light and shadows, and I can see the whole called the gestalt, the thing itself. It's a five, uh, five component skills, and it's interesting how our um, uh, Betty Edwards made the research, how students are good in these skills, and they t told her about their feelings, what has happened in their brains. 
And you see perceptions of ages for L mode is life uh, is level brain hemisphere. It's too complex, too slow, not needed for quick naming. And I have some exercise for you. Just it is not efficient light, but when you just try to observe your finger, any finger, there are, there are a lot of lines here. A, a, a lot of. Just don't think about this, that this is your arm, this is my thing, oh, come on. It's only forms, lines here, just. And you put your another, in the right or left hand, your pencil, and try to be, to paint it, these lines. But to be very slow, you don't, don't look to the paper. Just to be very slow, one second, one millimeter, and something like this. For the left brain state of our consciousness, it's uh, difficult, it's no need to do this. But if you want to be in a creative state, you need some me me method how to switch off, how to be in this creative, uh, the right brain hem state of our, our brain or our consciousness is very creative. It's like a flow. We are not discuss, we're not judge, we're just doing like a flow. So the perception of spaces. I do not deal with nothing. It is nothing. It is air. It's not, it has no name. Uh, it's not useful. Spaces cannot be named. Perceptions of relationships. Too paradoxical. Don't tell me that the ceiling slants. I know it's horizontal. Don't tell me that the person in the distance is half the size of the one close by. This stuff doesn't fit what I know. So this is the paradox about uh, apprehensive, apprehensive cognition and comprehensive one. Perceptions of lights and shadows, too complicated, and they keep changing all the time. Then there is a light from the sun, and sun, sun is moving, and the light is changed. So when we have example, just put the pencil. I don't have a pencil now, but uh, Vladimir, uh, showed us the pencil and say what is the color, what is the shape. And somebody said there's a blue and uh, white. It's, it's not true. It's symbolic vision of colors. Uh, there were many colors on this uh, form, many, and they were moving. And nobody of us couldn't see it because we are not in this state, we are not concentrated. Um, and perceptions of gestalt, too many parts. I cannot pay attention and name them all and just name them whole thing. I went for seminars for this drawing and I will show you, I'm not a painter. My, my painting was like a childish one, maybe uh, a little bit better than I showed you before, but <laughs> it was this style. And when I put all these things in my consciousness and try to be conscious in, in the moment of pain, the moment of seeing, you see, here, when I work with the foam, was a, a huge tension. It's just like a muscle, training muscle all the time. And it's like you uh, built new neuron connections. I never used them. And I think we never used many parts of our brain. And uh, when I went to the seminar about colors, uh, uh, the area and brain was different here. Just, I trained another part of uh, my brain. And you see, my teacher of color, she said that um, she, she has a, a de um, high degree in the State University of Moscow, and she said it's to draw and to be conscious of colors and forms. It's very difficult, it's very complicated. It's even more <laughs> complicated to be intellectual because you need to hold so de uh, a lot of details in, in your mind in one moment. And now I will show you the pictures, not to be only in words. This is, was an example and the method what, what we uh, we drew not the lines, we drew spaces. And it, it was my work there. Uh, 
Another example, there are a lot of lines here, and the method what that we should draw like this. Uh, yes, upside down, because uh, not to, to think about this man that he is sitting, I, I drew only lines, and that is my, it was only one hour uh, to do this exercise. I'm not a painter, but it works. And another example, it's more effective one. Thank you very much. It's also my work is here, and this is orig original. And you see, I'm not a painter, but if I use all these methods, I can see and I can draw. It not put on into. I need to. Yes, I need some skills in my hands, but it's, the main question is our seeing, how we see things. And everybody is a painter. Everybody. Thank you. It's nice, I can tell you from here. She's a painter, she's lying. <laughs> no, it's uh, interesting. Uh, the point from which we see. It's an old picture, and this is a painter, and you see it's like a candle or knife, and he fix a point from which he tried to see this woman. And our eyes, our eyes, see differently, left and right. And some painters say, to see things, they just put the close, one eye is closing, and they measure it's fixed, fixed measuring uh, something that is far away like this. And this is a, this is point is very important. And uh, not only for the drawing, you see, what is opinion? We say it's uh, opinion like a view, like a, um, we have thoughts. There are also images. I stand here. I view and I look uh, at you from this point, from this point, okay? And I have a s picture. And you have another point. Uh, that is why we will, everybody will have different vision, different opinion. And it's very important not only for drawing and not only for seeing, but we need to be aware that we are looking for from different points of in space. And I can look uh, at you not only from the physical level, maybe from vital, maybe from mental, maybe from psychic. And there will be another view, another pictures, another, f another forms. But the idea will be, the intention will be the same. Um, so, Often we just discuss, we just disagree or agree with each other, but uh, to be integral, we must learn to stand, for example, to my point and to see from my view. And you will integrate this idea in your consciousness. And in the same time, I can do the same with your point of view. And this is the integration, not to be against something, and to integralize, to unify all of these points of view. We have s a lot of them. Um, just domains and contexts of vision we have different levels of consciousness, and we can see from these levels of consciousness differently, the form will be changed. Mental, psychic, vital, intuitive, supramental. I have no vision of supramental. I, I can't say anything about it now. But when we just absorb some images, we need to understand uh, what is the context of vision, what is the domains of vision, from which point, from which level of consciousness I can see you or something. And it is very important to be aware of. I put uh, pictures here. 
uh, have a lot of names of these pictures, but I see it's uh, we have a lot of pictures on the walls also. We can do an exercise just to look at as a painter was looking on something from which level of scene of which level of consciousness he uh, has this image. Maybe some vital, yes, I see this vital, but vital also has a lot of uh, levels in size. So that's why some, some magic here, you see? It's one Gorkan starry night. Uh, yes, it's uh, San Yakpol Harbor, Marcel's Harbor. You see the colors. S uh, for me, for me, it's like uh, psychic colors. He observed the reality from another plane. He wants to introduce us in other, uh, another vision, another image. Subtle physical. It's um, Salvador Dali, the persistence of memory. Um, it's Vasily Kandinsky succession. Symbolic one, yeah? It's, uh, he, uh, he was another language of scenes and another form. And this is Michael Vrubel, a demon, Rakshas. You see, it's an interesting view of demon. Very interesting. He said, the artist is Mikhail Michael Vrubel. It's a Russian art artist. I like this. It's a comma. <laughs> um, René Marguerite lovers. Lovers are blind. It's symbolic vision. You see, it's, yeah, she uses uh, uh, another language to express this reality. Another level of consciousness, I think more mental one, but not pure mental, something. Phenomenos is here. Oh, this one. Sacral geometry, we used to call it. It's also vision, but uh, not from the physical or vital uh, conscious level of consciousness, and from the mental one. We have all these structures there. And a lot of powers, you see. Many uh, Indian pictures have a level of vital vision. And this one from Savitri. You see, I just want to show you how, from which point of view I would like to observe here, from here, and we need to distinguish when we discuss something with somebody, we need to distinguish the context of his view and the, uh, from which point of view he observe. And then we go to the subtle vision. On the first day, I comment that we can see not only with our eyes, it's very, um, we can see with our cells, cells. Uh, many blind people, they uh, see things, but in another way. And our self, cells uh, has the same consciousness and they have the same functions of seeing. 
Uh, I would like to describe this subtle vision from the point of view of Sherabinda and mothers, uh, because they are very clear about subtle vision. Uh, vision, is a, a vision is of value because it is often a first key to inner planes of one's own being and one's own consciousness as distinguished from worlds or planes of the cosmic consciousness. To see Brahman everywhere is not possible unless you develop the inner vision. To do that you need to concentrate, to see non-material forms is indeed possible for a few because they have the gift by nature, but most can do it without developing the subtle side. It is absurd to expect the divine to manifest his presence without you taking any trouble to see it. You have to concentrate. Inner vision is vivid like actual sight always precise and contains a truth in it. In mental vision, the images are invented by the mind and are partly true. It is this very important thought, partly true, and the vital visions will be also partly true. Um, it's a play of possibilities. Or a mental vision like the vital may be only a suggestion that is the formation of some possibility on the mental or vital plane which presents itself to the sadhak in the hope of being accepted and helped to realize itself. In order to realize the vi this vision, it has been found by experience that a man must attain freedom from the lower impulses which identify the body and the vital impulses with self. He must practice cleanliness and purity in mind, body and speech, abstinence from gross gratifications and freedom from the domination of passions and desires, indifference to cold, heat, hunger, thirst, fatigue, and other affections from external influences. In other words, he must be completely master of his own body. And that is why in the beginning I said to you, I am very far from this state. <laughs> uh, we need all these 12 qualities of psychic being to see true, to see the truth, to have the contact with the self. We need to develop all these qualities inside us. They will, be, they, they will transform and purify our functions of consciousness. And that is the way can, can we progress. To see oneself in others is possible, is impossible without completely identifying oneself with others. A perfect sympathy is essential. A perfect sympathy brings with it perfect love, perfect charity and forgiveness, perfect pity for sin and suffering, perfect tolerance, a universal benevolence with its counterpart in action universal beneficence. Very interesting experience of the madam, which uh, was described in agenda. I like it very much. Uh, it's the same thing with my eyes. I have started seeing things with my eyes open. Oh. People's states, their thoughts, and especially the state of their vital, because it's a vision of the physical, a very subtle, very vitalized physical, and it is a representation of things in pictures. And their state shows its, itself as, if you knew Mother Loves, the, the things one can see, a myriad of forms in one second, a myriad of forms faces, expressions. You would think it's an album of the sharpest humorist imaginable. It's extraordinarily humorous and sharp in the perception and the sense of how ridiculous people are. <laughs> and then in the middle of all that, suddenly a beautiful form, a beautiful picture, a beautiful expression appears. 
something so beautiful, so pure, so wonderful, wonderfully noble. And it all turns round and round constantly. It's very amusing, really. But after some time, Mother uh, said that, no, it's a lot of information. I didn't want to see these things in reality. And this is some practical map, what we can do with uh, the faculty of seeing. Um, we can develop apprehensive cognition if we are aware if we are aware what is it in reality. I recommend you to see the movie on the TED conversation. One woman is uh, tells about right and left brain capacity, and they dis she describes very well this state of right brain uh, capacity. I can find for you the link. It's very uh, useful to have an experience of what il what is it like it like it like it is discrimination of images origin from what level of consciousness this image come for, comes for us mental vital psychical and other levels and developing physical sight shapes colors periphery volume size details perspective composition a cognition of edges, spaces, relationships, lights, shadows, thing itself, beauty and harmony. Holding the image of thing with all the details in mind, just close our eyes and to see in all details what I, uh, what I see before. It's very complicated and we can train it. Creating the image of things with all the details in mind, drawing in mind like Nikola Tesla did. Developing subtle vision. There are lots of information about subtle vision by Sri Aurobindo and Mother, and we can use it also in our discovery. To develop photographical memory, it's also about apprehending. In Japan, uh, there, are, there is a school for children to they develop right brain capacity. And uh, one exercise is for, what for children like in this age, they show very fast pictures, very fast, one second, one second, one second. It is an exercise for training photographic memory. You don't think, you don't, you don't need to understand, only apprehend. And everything is in us. And then they, if they can just take out from the brain this picture and then only describe, and then only to comprehend. Can you imagine what will be our education if we will have photographic memory? In ordinary schools, you don't need to uh, just look, okay, I will tell the teacher what she wants to, to hear from me. Very good skill, and it, it lies in scene. Learning different languages of forms, abstractions, realism, symbolism, geometry, stereometry, conceptions, forms in different dimensions. I don't know, um, maybe it was Picasso. He tried to do, he tried to, 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 drew, to draw uh, forms in the fourth dimension. He tried to express this form, how it can be in fourth dimension. It's a very interesting thing. And how to be a philosopher, philosopher and how to be a, a um, poet also. And philosopher and a poet, they are come from seeing also. It's another domain of knowledge. Can you give an example of the discrimination of image mental value principle? And the second last thing is learning from different language models. Examples of pictures? Examples, I have something here, but just as we discuss, maybe I will should, uh, okay, and later I can show you. And this is a list of disciplines which can we can um, develop our skills of seeing, drawing, sculpture, graphic, photographic, cinematography, design, I think architecture also. <laughs> and it's like a sketch of these disciplines. Peripheral vision workshops, peripheral vision when we don't see only this direction and we see 
all of these directions. It's uh, very wonderful thing also. Um, Photograph uh, geometry and stereometry is very helpful for the mental vision also, for this sacral uh, geometry also. Photographic memory workshops, um, philosophical approach to knowledge. Um, I'm not a philosopher, but I really now understand that it comes from seeing. Um, it's just the beginning. All this is like a beginning of, of my journey to the scene, and uh, I would like to develop this method to find something interesting, how we can um, progress in seeing. Um, that is, I think, the end. Yes. And uh, I have one thing, I have one exercise to do with all of you. Now, we have prepared a film with our team in Russia and with Vladimir. And it is a, um, it is example of our seeing, how we see things, how we can see the, this integral paradigm of knowledge. And um, we can now exercise our apprehensive cognition, not to be understand every passage, and to comprehend simultaneously, but to be open, to be relaxed, to apprehend this thing, and then you will have everything you want, just to try to do it. And I need some help to make a sound. Knowledge. What is knowledge? The central aim of knowledge is the recovery of the self of our true self-existence. Sri Aurobindo, the synthesis of yoga. Knowledge is not information we use. It is a dynamic power of consciousness which can manifest in us. It is rather a state of consciousness in which we know. We must learn to invoke this state of consciousness and to be able to hold onto it. What do we know about ourselves? We are partially educated for a specific purpose, which determines our qualifications and character. Our knowledge is fragmented and cut off from the holistic vision of things. It is not integrated around one center. Our aim is to get information and know-how. It is to survive, to succeed in life, rather than to get an integral understanding of it. What is the image of an educated man today? How can we determine it? By success and level of intelligence? And the amount of scientific information the person can use? Or is there something more? The efficacy and the success seem to define our approach to education today. Education becomes a direct recruitment for social institutions and industries. For many, it becomes a way to survive and to obtain material gains. If that would be all, we would not look for a deeper meaning in education, but simply follow the known path. Let us have a brief look at the relation of the individual to society. Social, governmental, corporate interests are constantly restricting and modifying the creativity and freedom of individuals. Though every system requires individuals, still it tries to restrict their freedom, keeping them under control and in the framework of its immediate needs. So. We are educated to get jobs, to earn our livelihood, to succeed and to survive in this world. And we ignore our inner aspirations, trying to find our own place in the social system, seeking to be accepted by it. However, individuals always aspire beyond limitations. Inner aspiration cannot be restrained or neglected for too long. The need for the inner realization and development is driving the individual forward 
and is a way to inner peace, joy, and creativity. It is the key to the transformation of the world, without which there would be no social development and prosperity. What is an integrally developed individual? One whose faculties of consciousness are integrated around the innermost center, the psychic being. One who possesses integrally developed consciousness, who is interested in the discovery of human potential and hidden capacities, going beyond personal limitations, realizing universal powers in the individual framework. One who becomes aware of hidden and secret operations of consciousness. One who obtains comprehensive understanding of other cultures, realizing the ideals of human unity. One who is free and creative in both inner and outer activities. What is integral learning? How does it correspond to the formation of an integral personality? What kind of individual will we see at the end of this process? The Divine Prototype Universal Purusha Atman, the Self, is constant and unchangeable, but in the form of consciousness, Purusha, it is changing and evolving in this manifestation through which we can arrive at the Divine Prototype in the individual form. Consciousness is the key to all our developmental changes and growth. What is consciousness? How does it work? Consciousness reveals itself through its faculties, seeing, hearing, thinking, speaking, feeling, and body. Therefore, we should train and develop our faculties and instruments of knowledge. The pure faculties of consciousness are the properties of the universal purusha and therefore of every individual, independent from cultural, national, religious or social heredity, which emerged in the process of evolution. Training and educating these universal faculties in the individual can be considered as a part of universal or spiritual education, leading eventually to the discovery of the innermost self. Integral approach to education may consist of many different practices and, depending on our own conscious preference and need, may result in certain unique approaches. This awareness of how faculties of consciousness are educated and how they operate is the foundation for integral education. Thus, one can dive into any field of knowledge or activity with confidence and certainty that the answers and solutions will be found. The University of Integral Studies is for all ages, professions, and specializations. It does not end with graduation, but rather begins. The knowledge continues to grow and becomes more and more complete and integrated around our innermost center. During the first period of studies, we shall train all the faculties of consciousness in a systematic manner. How it operates through seeing, hearing, thinking, speaking, feeling and being in the body. We gradually become aware of our faculties and their functions. Such courses as how to think and to be conscious in our thoughts, how to speak and to be conscious in speech, how to improve visual memory, how to improve mental concentration and mental silence, etc., could be prepared and offered to all. The individual is developing and deepening his knowledge and skills during his lifetime, and the expression of his universal potential is always unique. One cannot assess individual development on the objective scale, for it is the subjective development of consciousness which cannot be compared with the development of others. One can only make a progress assessment of one's own development in time. And here lies the difficulty 
of accepting the uniqueness of every individual development. It is important for many, especially youngsters, before choosing any specialization, to have the whole set of instruments and tools developed to a certain extent before they can consciously choose. It will change its character quite considerably, especially if they apply a set of integrally developed faculties to the concrete field of knowledge and an integral approach to sciences. Deconstruction of the old forms of knowledge will be the result of this application, wherein the search for a new vision and approach to specialization becomes the method. The next stage will introduce the deepening of our self-awareness through the development of psychic qualities. These will be applied to our life and the concrete fields of knowledge. For instance, to be sincere in our thoughts feelings, words, social relations, or how to gain equality in our mental judgments, emotions, feelings, thoughts, etc. We cannot discover ourselves without our self-realization. The psychic being is the center of the true integrity of consciousness. So we need to find in ourselves and our lives True sincerity, humility, gratitude, perseverance, aspiration, receptivity, progress, and courage, which are oriented towards our inner discovery and goodness, generosity, equality, and peace turn towards others. That is how the faculties of consciousness will be able to purify and transform our human nature into the divine being. As a result, man will be able to become a creator of his life, capable of embodying and transmitting a free and creative consciousness. Integrally developed, he will be able to reflect the universal faculties and will be capable of creating any new environments and meaningful relations in it. It is a step forward where every individual becomes an effective contributor to the social welfare, reflecting the depths of the universal being rather than superficial relations on the surface. And thus, he will be no more in conflict with others. The deeper consciousness in us can have a chance to manifest. Because